And now, the Mole Mystery Theater. Presented by Antrugless Shaving Cream for Tender Skin. <laughs> Good evening. This is Jeffrey Barnes, welcoming you to the program that presents the best in mystery and detective fiction. A few weeks ago, we brought you a story written by Joseph Ruscole and entitled The Case of the Missing Mind. It concerned a smart alecky little racetrack character named Kenny Andrews, who got into one jam after another and finally ended up in an insane asylum. Well, you mystery fans out there apparently took Kenny to your hearts as we did. A number of you wrote wanting to find out whether he did get out of the asylum and what happened then. So we asked Mr. Rusko, and tonight he's telling us in The Further Adventures of Kenny Andrews. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Barnes, but how about mentioning that other psychopathic case? Oh, you mean the ambulance driver who drove himself crazy? No, no, I'm talking about the fellow who said he'd rather be put in a straitjacket than shave. You know, shaving isn't torture to him anymore. He's switched to Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream. Yes, sir, men, with Mole, it's smooth. So smooth. It's slick. So slick. It's a smooth, smooth, slick, slick shave you get with M-O-L-L-E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tender skins. That's right. Mole is the cream that's heavier. The cream you need if you have a wiry, hard-to-cut beard or a tender skin. Because Mole is heavier, it not only softens your whiskers, it stands them up straight and lets your razor slice them right off. So you shave faster, closer, easier, and you shave painlessly with Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tender skin. Now for tonight's Mole mystery, the further adventures of Kenny Andrews. <laughs> Such things should happen to me. To me, Kenny Andrews. This time I'm really on the spot. I'm on the spot, you hear? It's murder. For crying out loud, listen to me, someone. Listen! All right. You remember how I got railroaded in a squirrel cage by that gang of crooks? Well, hooray, I'm sprung. Habeas corpus. But no sooner I'm out and exhale a few times over a scratch sheet, when lo, I'm in a jam again. My lawyer, Alexander Farfel. He wants his fee. And I want it quick. And can he stop trying to pay me off in horse tips? Nor do I want to buy in on a blind date with a showgirl. What a proposition. I want my fee. But 200 bucks, you want to cut out my heart? I'm only two hours in the fresh air. My golly, Mr. Farfel, give me a little time to work out a few angles. You and your angles, angles. Got me out of the bug house, didn't it? You mean... You mean that riot there? You mean... You mean you planned that? Certainly. You made book in a nut house, got all the attendants and queries to bet, and then when you couldn't pay off and that riot started, you did all that as an angle? Certainly. So I could telephone you during the health of Skelter so you could spring me. Ah. Uh, Kenny. Kenny, what's that you're carrying? That, that, that violin case? Are you really crazy? What's with the violin case? It's my suitcase. I want it flipping a two-headed quarter. It's a long story, but look, don't you see? I'm, now I'm absolutely up the creek, so if you'll just give me a little time on those two seats... Shut up! Now look, Kenny, while I repeat myself, I sprung you from a birdcage. You are a sharp guy with a million angles, so I'll give you just 24 hours to raise me my fee. I don't care how you get it. But if you don't, I'll bounce you right back from whence you came, the nut house. So I'm on the way back to the nut house, unless I raise two C's. My only assets are one, my violin case, and two, a blind date I had transacted over the phone for eight o'clock that night with a ravishing little pancake at the Square Circle Cafe, one Nicky Passions by name. Well, I saunters around the stem, up and down, down and up. But all my fair weather pals button up when I mention a touch. I even offered to let Blinch's Malloy, the bookie, buy in on a piece of my blind date. But no soap. 
So finally I entered the bar and grill to avoid the freeze. And this is where the horrible climax begins. I'm standing at the bar when suddenly a mysterious-looking character slides up and... Why to make 200 bucks, pal? <laughs> no kidding. 200 bucks? <laughs> Who do I have to make it? guy named Kenny Andrews. Uh, come again? You're an out-of-town torpedo, huh, pal? Huh? It's all right, chum. I'm Pinko Schultz of the Corelli Mark. You probably heard of me. Miguel Corelli's right-hand man. Oh, oh sure, sure. I, 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 I heard of you. Two saints, huh? Not another dime. To tell the truth, I was supposed to have bumped the character personally for Big Al. Oh. But you know, I'm kept pretty busy, this and that, in City Hall. Personally, I don't know the character. He may be a real nice guy, for all I know. Oh, yeah, that, 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 that's right, you. You're absolutely right, Pinko. He, he might be a very nice guy. Yeah, maybe, but he threw Big Al a couple of bum tips at the track which set the boss back plenty. I give Big Al the word the character's rubbed out, but luck's still running bad. So Big Al would like to visit the tipster's grave just to be sure. And there ain't even a corpus yet, you see. Yeah, I, I see. I figured it'd be cleaner all around to let an outside torpedo like you do the job. By the way, what's your name, pal? What mob are you from? Oh, well, I'm... I'm Chicago Louis. From Chicago. No, well, pleased to meet you. And you're just the boy to do the job. Uh, wait, wait, just, just let me just think it over, huh? Take your time. Most unusual proposition. But two C's. Why, that'll pay off that lousy farfel. Maybe I can wangle the fee in advance. Anyhow, as long as I keep gunning for myself instead of Pinko doing it, I'm alive. Two C's. Maybe I can angle this thing somehow. Well, Louis, what do you say? I'll do it. Good boy, Louis. I, uh, <laughs> I like it in advance. Oh, yeah? I'll give you a fin. Balance when the corpus is shown. Oh. Now to put you in touch with the finger. Uh, who's the finger? A certain frail at the Square Circle Cafe. She's one of the mob. A showgirl there, Nikki Passion. Nikki Passion? Right. She's in on the trap. You go there before Kenny shows up and she'll put the finger on him. Mow him down. <laughs> This Miss Passion's dressing room? Yeah. Why? I'm uh, Chicago Louis uh, from Chicago. Oh, so you're him. You don't look like a torpedo. Come on in. Thanks. Pinko. Pinko just phoned me you were coming to do the job. Park the body and the violin case. Thanks. The sucker's due here in 10 minutes. It's a blind date, see? But I'll know him by his voice. When he knocks, I'll open the door and then let him have it. Catch? Yeah, I, I, uh, I catch, Miss Passion. Yeah. <laughs> You're cute, killer. Pardonnez-moi while I change over behind the screen there. No peeking, Louie. Did you catch my act? Yeah, you, you were swell. beginning to do things to me. If you want a drink, help yourself. It's on my dressing table. What the heck am I doing here under the circumstances? Well, Maybe I belong in a nut house after all. Well, but I'm still riding those two seas. There must be an angle somewhere. Anyhow, well, yeah, good thing I put on these smoke glasses from the five of dime. Well, here I am again. How do you like me in this gown, Louie? Oh, what there is of it, Miss Passions. Do you like the material? Oh, Miss Passions, I... I have long desired an interview with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Log, now let's get down to business. He'll be here in a few minutes. Take it out and set it up. Uh, uh, set one up? The artillery from the violin cage. Yeah, but... but get but, but... going. What's the matter, you chicken-hearted? Take it behind the screen there and set it up. You can sight through the crack and shoot through the screen. Oh, I see. Uh, behind the screen, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, trigger. Good. Okay, stay at the table out there. We'll let you know when we need you. Who's that? Just Trigger Haynes, one of the boys. Think 
so send him to hang around till you plug the horse player, then he'll get rid of the body. Huh? I think I'll take a walk around the block. <laughs> You're a great little kidder. Come here and have a drink. We got a minute. Uh, th there's actually a guy in a cafe waiting to dispose of my... I, I, I mean, Kenny's body? Yeah, where is the thing lined up? It's Louie. Oh. Here. Good for your nerves. To Nikki and Louie. Huh? Know what I mean? To Nikki and Louie. Have you got an aspirin? Bottoms up. What have you done to me, you bum? Huh? What, 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 what? You'll know well enough. Oh, no, no, honest. You I... made me fall in love with you, you heel. Oh, Miss Passion. Call me Nikki. Nikki, I... I can hardly believe From it. the minute I laid eyes on you. Oh, Louie, will you give me a break? Will I? Oh, Nikki, I'm already crazy about you, though you were so unusual. I... Watch his name again. Have Take another name. drink. You know, I'm surprised at you, Louie. Very surprised. Why, Nikki, baby? What do you got against poor Kenny Andrews? Well, nothing, nothing at all, honest. Then how did you do such a thing? Such a cold-blooded killer. A bumping off for passion or revenge or so forth, I could understand. But you never even laid eyes on him. Ah, oh, promise me this will be your last job, Louie. And then you'll go straight with me. Oh, sure. I'll even be glad to even skip this job if you say so. No, 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 no. This last one. For Big Al's sake. Nikki, I don't think it will be necessary to kill this guy, Kenny, after all. As I don't think he'll even show up. Oh, yes, yes, he will. Any second now, it's 8 o'clock sharp. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got it straight from my personal grapevine, Nikki, so don't worry. Kenny Andrews will never knock at that door and you can... Who is it? Kenny Andrews. As the curtain falls on Act One of tonight's play, we find Kenny Andrews about to meet himself face to face. And under the most unusual circumstances, eh, Dan? Well, uh, not so unusual, Mr. Barnes. There are times when many a man feels that he's about to murder himself. Oh, Dan, I don't believe it. <laughs> but it's true. For instance, shaving is practically suicide for some men, especially if they have wiry whiskers or a tender skin. And yet it needn't be. That's right, men. If you want a smooth, slick shave, use Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tender skin. Yes, Mole is a heavier cream. The cream that not only softens your whiskers, but holds them up straight while your razor cuts them off close and clean. With Mole, you shave faster, closer, easier, and you shave painlessly. Try it. See if you don't say, it's smooth. So smooth. It's slick. So slick. It's a smooth, smooth, slick, slick shave you get with M-O-L-L-E. Mole, the heavier brushless shaving cream for tender skin. Mole. This is Jeffrey Barnes returning you to Act Two of The Further Adventures of Kenny Andrews. We left Kenny, who is posing as Chicago Louie, in Nikki Passion's dressing room. Kenny is startled and confused by a voice outside the door that has shouted, Kenny Andrews. It's him, Louie. Impossible, it can't be. Get behind the screen, quick. What? Do like I say. And when he comes in, mow him down. Mow him down. Come in, Kent. Hey, it's you. Yeah. Big Al. Uh, I'm your boy. I'm a fine, faithful uh, dog. Al, what's up? I thought you were hiding out. Well, I had to take the chance. I had to see my little Nicky again. I get so lonesome. What was the idea of saying you were Kenny Andrews? Oh, that. Just a nom de plum. Pinko plugged a little racetrack towel for me a couple of weeks ago, so I'm using it for a disguise. Slip us another little one, huh? Hey, hey, wait, Al. Look, I, I, I might as well tell you, Pinko told you a little white lie. He ain't even caught up with Kenny Andrews yet. What? Now, he told you that because he knew you were so sensitive. You mean that little vermin Kenny ain't pushing up daisies? No, no, Why, take uh, it easy, I... Al. And if I was you, I'd lamb it quick. You're hot. Shut up. 
trying to get rid of me, eh? Oh. Otherwise, Nicky. I know you've been playing around with some new hot drop, and when I catch up, it'll be curtains for all of you. Oh. Who's that? Who are you? The screen. It, it fell down. Who's the guy with a violin? Oh, that's me. Oh, 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 oh
Exactly. Word for word. Blind. Now go to Pinko Schultz's apartment, see? And you tell him... So I uh, come to collect my two seats, Pinko. <laughs> I took care of the little rat. I rubbed them out. Pretty sharp operator, Louie, ain't you? What do you mean? I mean, how do I know you're telling me the truth unless I see a corpus? Well, I, I told you... You told me your true Kenny's remains in a bag of cement and sunk same in the East River. Yeah, that's right. But where's the proof? How do I even know there's a bag of cement in the East River with a corpus stuck in it? Go away now. I want to listen to a radio program. I don't get it either. What are you mumbling about? Go away. Don't bother me. New York. Police report the ghastly discovery of a human corpse just fished out of the East River. Huh? The body had been encased in a large sack of cement and then tossed into the East River by some fiendish criminal. Oh, my goodness. Identification has not yet been made, nor do the police... Holy Christopher! Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. You do it, pal. I, I do it. Won't Big Al be tickled? Oh, yeah. Okay, then. Here's your two seals. <laughs> Oh, what do you got? Uh, don't bother to say, my good man. I'll buy them all. Oh, sure, why not? The morning is young. You are a financial slave, and I just consumed a clever business deal last night. Uh, what's the headline? Well, you're looking right at it. Can't you read? Not with my glasses on. Read away, fellow. East River body identified. Notorious gang leader. Big Al Corelli slain. Big Al, do Hey, mister. Hey, what's the matter? <laughs> Hello? Yeah, this is room 226. Yeah, this is Kenny Andrews. Who are you? Hello? I'm up. Oh, my gosh, it sounded like Pinko. Down in the lobby, coming up to get me. I'm innocent. Pinko, I'm innocent! Oh! Uh, operator, operator, get me the police, quick. A man's life is at stake. Hello, is this the police? Oh, my golly, they're going to take me for a ride. The Corelli mob. They think I was tailing Corelli. No, of course I wasn't. I was tailing Kenny Andrews. Who's this? This is Kenny Andrews. I know it sounds mixed up, but look, I'm not a screwball. Listen okay, to me. Okay, you rat. Put down that phone and reach. No. No, no, no don't do it, Pico. Don't do it. That gun, I... X marks the spot, my guy. So it was my boss you pushed up, huh? Well, I'm frisking you for those two C's you stained. Huh. Ah. Ah, uh, here it is. I swear I'm clean. It's a mystery. This whole thing's got Shut me. Shut up. Sing now. Why'd you do it, Louie? Oh, my golly. I'm not even Louie. Oh, no? Who, then? I'm Kenny Andrews. <laughs> Honest, you got to believe me. Nikki knows. Oh, if Nikki was here, she'd vouch for it. Oh, yeah? Come on in, Nikki. Nikki! Why'd you do it, Louie? Huh? Nikki. Nikki, tell him. Tell this guy who I really am. What are you trying to pull, Louie? Another fast one? Why'd you kill Big Al? Me kill him? Nicky, how can you do this to me? Plug Big Al in my dressing room, Pinko. Poor Al. Nicky! Oh, a veil is falling from my face. Such dirty poo! Well, Pinko, what are you waiting for? Let him have it. No, don't, don't... Sure, I'm gonna let him have it, Nicky. After I finish you... Huh? What do you mean? I know you wanted Big Al out of the way and why. Al told me, see, and this was your chance with Dirty Louie here to oblige anyone for a price. You little rat. Pinko, shame on you. Shut up, you, or you'll go first. She is no rat. She's a lady. You bump a lady? Wouldn't you? Why, you... Hey. 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 Get him, buddy. Get him to me. Hey. 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 All right, over to you. Hey. Just come it. Put him out. Come to the wall. First come, Casey. You're all under arrest for the murder of Big Al Corelli. <laughs> This is Jeffrey Barnes again. In just a moment, we'll bring you Act Three of The Further Adventures of Kenny Andrews. If a common type of dandruff is spoiling the appearance of your hair and you've been trying to combat it with little or no success, listen carefully. Many outstanding authorities contend that this dandruff is not a natural condition but actually is caused by a germ. And the truth is that most ordinary hair preparations are no more effective for fighting this dandruff than plain water is. 
For like water, all they do is remove loose dandruff. They have no effect whatever on the germ. But double dandrine actually kills the germ on contact. Even in severe cases, results with double dandrine have been remarkable. Now, the amazing effectiveness of double dandrine is due to a special ingredient called Alzan, an active antiseptic so remarkably efficient that many hospitals use it. And among hair preparations, only double dandrine has it. So try double dandrine and see if you don't agree that most ordinary hair preparations can't compare with its dandruff-combating effectiveness. If you're not completely satisfied, return the empty bottle and get your money back. Buy double dandrine at your druggist. All right, squirrel food, I'm releasing you before I go nuts. Beat it. Oh, thanks, Inspector. We know who killed Corelli, and it wasn't you. Nor was it any of the Corelli gang, though we're holding that bad passions dame as an accessory. Mickey? Oh, she's just bad from the way the world goes. Kenny, much as it grieves me, I'm forced to tell you that you're in line for your share of the reward for the capture of the Corelli gang. Huh? How much? Two C's. Oh, oh, go on, oh, get oh, out of here. Oh, 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 Inspector, wait a minute. Who did kill Corelli if it wasn't any of his gang? You say you know. Sure. You put the finger on him, Kenny. Did... Me? How? By your whole daffy act. If it wasn't for that, we'd never think of comparing the fingerprints on that sack of plaster with those of the real killer. It wouldn't have occurred to us because we wouldn't have suspected the real killer was here in town at the time. Well, but uh, who, who was it? Nikki Passion's secret boyfriend, who she put up to it all. So she and him could get free of Big Al before Al caught up with him. We're closing in on the killer now. Huh? Well, I, I still don't get it. Who was the killer? Chicago Louie. What a break. What a windfall. Two C's. <laughs> I think, what is Schlemiel as Inspector Ross looking to capture Chicago Louie as the killer when Chicago Louie is a myth? Because I am Chicago Louie, or was. Only I am and was Kenny Andrews. So having a hearty laugh at it all, I just come back to my hotel room just now, and as soon as I get in, there's a ring on the phone. Hello? Kenny Andrews? Yeah. Say your prayers, you lousy rat. Mm -hmm. You're a dead duck. I'm out to get you before the cops get me. But, 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 but why? What for? What for? You impersonated me. What for? You put the finger on me, you bum. Oh, my golly. Who, who is it? Chicago Louie. From Chicago. <laughs> you see? All you guys listening to me, you hear? I'm really on the spot now. Such things should happen to a dog. You're laughing, huh? It's something to laugh. Drop dead. It's Mida. Mida, get it? Don't you sit there. You got an angle. Throw it to me. For crying out loud, listen to me, someone. Throw me an angle. <laughs> This is Jeffrey Barnes again, inviting you to be with us next week when we present a hard-boiled crime story by Ray Bradbury entitled, Killer, Come Back to Me. Richard Widmark, star of the Broadway Theater and Radio, will be our guest star. So be with us next week for a thrilling crime adventure. <laughs> Original music for the Mole Mystery Theater is composed and conducted by Alexander Sendler. The Further Adventures of Kenny Andrews was written by Joseph Ruskold. Carl Eastman played the part of Kenny. This is Dan Seymour saying goodnight until next Friday at this same time when the Mystery Theater presents Killer Come Back to Me. This program came to you from New York's Radio City. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.